clap, 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 got the clap, 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 clap the clap, clap, syphilis, syphilis, making jokes of STDs, love it, all right, um, let's clean up my desk, um, I So, I wanted to show you guys some cool shit that just came in. Um, many of you guys have told me, many of you guys have told me this, actually. Uh, who was the first one? I don't want to give Timmy all the credit because he actually brought up one of these guys. And uh, a few of you others brought up this cool power supply that Meanwhile has brought out. Am I, am I pointing? Am I looking at the right camera? I am. So let's open. There's nothing in my box. Um, hold on. There it is, it's over here. So let's take a look at this new Meanwhile. This is fucking cool. I think this is a game changer. Um, so, as you guys know, as I've driven home to an ex exhausting degree, uh, the importance of proper power supplies and rectifiers at your telecom sites, which uh, I'm hoping to get some good footage of actual telecom sites at some point. But um, this is the new Meanwhile. So this is a small plant. This is a small plant DC UPS. This is basically an all-in-one rectifier device. And the cool benefit to this thing is it has a RJ45 for CAN bus. Now, what this is, this is for a small relay site. It's this. I picked the 48-volt model specifically because the price on this is actually not bad. I think I paid uh, 398 for it, uh, Canadian. With the Patreon money, thank you Patreons, because I try to spend as much of your money on stuff for this channel as I can, and the other stuff goes to helping feed me. Because um, as you know, I'm fairly neurodivergent, which makes it very difficult uh, to exist in normal society without the help of others. Uh, so anyway, I digress. <clears throat> the cool thing about this guy is this is perfect for a small site. You've got a little re relay site, a little repeater site, whatever, right? And you need 240 watts. This is the key. It is a DRS, as in SAM, 240-48. The first digits, of course, the DRS, represent the um, power supply line, the type, right? Over here, we've got 240 watts. That's, this is a 240. I believe that it does a 480, which would be a 10 amp, okay? The last digits represent the voltage, so this is a 48 volt. So the cool thing about these power supplies, just like with all mean wells, uh, if you look around here, we should be able to find the potentiometer. Let me find it. I literally just opened this. These guys usually have a potentiometer on here that you can actually set the voltage um, for the uh, power supply. Because these need to be about 54.4 volts uh, to properly run AGM batteries. So I'm just looking around on here for our potentiometer. Come on, meanwhile. Hope you don't have to program it with CAN bus. That'd be a pain in the ass. I'm not seeing your potentiometer. Um, did they, there's no way they hit it in the RJ45 port, no. There's really not a manual in here because you can go online for these. It says that the, um, output is 48 volts. I'm hoping that it's not literal. We'll find out in a moment anyway. Um, so the idea here with this guy, we're just going to do an overview first and then I'll do some testing on it. I'm about to leave on a trip, by the way. Sorry to rant, but, uh. Um, I'm going to be gone for like a month, so it's, I'm going to have a hard time producing content while I'm gone. I'll give you guys updates and whatnot. Um, but anyway, thanks for your patience. So this is your load terminal right here. So you've got two positive, two negative. Uh, this is what you would connect to the DC bus for your site. Um, here's your battery terminals, and here's your AC terminals here. Um, this guy here has an input of 50 to 60 hertz, so this will work in North America. It'll basically work around the world. And I believe that it'll take 12240, but don't quote me on that. Um, oh, here we go, 100 to 277 volts AC. So this will work pretty much anywhere. It's a universal power supply. Um, this has a CAN bus connector on it. Um, I believe it's CAN bus. So this allows you to tie it into any CAN bus uh, translator, which will allow you to monitor the device, which I'm not sure. I haven't looked at the CAN bus characteristics on it. I'm not sure if it just gives you these guys here or what, but... Um, Either way, look, there's an AC fail alarm right here, which there's a million ways to do AC fail. One of the easiest is, is to monitor SNMP on your devices. And when you see it dip from 54 to 52, you know mains is offline, right? Um, so anyway, that being said, we've got some dip switches and whatnot here. Um, I really hope that there's a manual. In this box as well, we've got some thermal probes. Um, so we've got these guys right here. Um, so the thermal probe looks like it connects in right here. And then this guy here goes on your battery terminal to 
monitor the temp. Now, it's kind of handy when it goes in the battery terminal because with AGMs, that means you're going to a lead stud that or lead leg that goes right down into the plates. So you get a very accurate temperature reading off of that. Um, so the cool thing about these power supplies, as with all the ones that I recommend for telecom, is it has low voltage disconnect, meaning that when the batteries are depleted uh, below their... Uh, whatever mark you choose, whether it's the 50% mark or 25% mark, when it gets below its cutoff point, it will disconnect the batteries and take the site offline. Now, the reason for that is with the AGMs or any batteries, um, you want to reduce the amount of cycles you put on them to increase longevity. Um, it also causes damage to the internal structures of the uh, devices if you deplete the batteries entirely. Um, so this one has low voltage disconnect and it's got current limiting, which is very important because inrush current can take a site offline. So if you don't set up a site properly um, and you have the inappropriate power supply for your site, and let's just say that your site is drawing 120 watts, but your plant power supply is only capable of providing, you know, 300 watts. Now let's say that you've run on batteries to the point where your batteries are nearly dead. What will happen now is when the batteries connect, okay, so like when the mains comes back online, there will be such a current draw from the batteries because the batteries are hungry. They're like, oh, fuck, we need power. We need to replenish ourselves, right? So they'll draw as much current as they can get until you reach a homeostasis. So that means that's because the batteries are like, you know, say, let's look, use 12 volts, okay? 13.5 um, is a float on an AGM. Float on an AGM. So if the batteries are all the way down to 10 volts, as an example, as soon as the site comes back online, those batteries will try to pull as much current as they can, like 20 amps, right? And if the power supply can't provide that, by default, it will fault and it'll, it'll cut off. It'll turn itself off until it's reset. The majority of power supplies out there will do that. Um, and if they're not designed for this application, if they're just a power supply. With the power supplies like this one here with the current limiter, you can determine what share of the total load can be devoted to charging your batteries. And some of you might be saying, well, you know, that's bullshit because I want to be able to charge my batteries at like 10 amps. It's just like, let's use uh, two real world, world scenarios. Let's use a place like South Africa or, you know, any other area that has rolling blackouts because of the, a lack of power, power deficiency. California is another third world nation we should be talking about. Um, so I just, I just, I just wanted to make an offensive joke just to get your panties in a knot. So anyway, uh, places like California and South Africa um, have rolling blackouts constantly because of deficiencies in power grids, okay? There's just too many people and not enough power. And in, in California, the problem is, is that they didn't properly design their grid to handle the modern loads of electric vehicles, which is occurring now. And so you get blackouts, okay? So the idea here is, is that in those areas, yes, you want to keep your batteries topped up all the time. So you're probably going to want to have more charging current uh, for your site. So you would actually need to use a larger power supply to devote more power to charging your batteries. But if this is a standard site, like for me here in on Terrible, uh, Kanakistan here, um, in Canada, we don't have that, that as much of an issue with that. Um, the issue that we have is like, you know, in the summertime, we'll usually have a bad storm once or twice, right? So we don't have to have the site always cocked and ready to fire, right? We, the power rarely goes out, so we don't need to pull a lot of current to charge the site. We can charge the site over a few hours or a couple of days, and it's not going to matter because we'll have blips here and there. So this is perfect for blips and whatnot. And um, eventually, when we do have that great big outage, our batteries are ready and waiting to go, right? So when they come back on and they are depleted, this charging current limiter will ensure that the site doesn't go offline. It's really that simple. So that's why you want uh, power supplies like this. And that's why things that come out like this are epic. They're awesome. Because when you've got a small site on the side of a customer's house that has, say, a couple of um, sectors on it and a backhaul feeding in and a little router, or maybe even just it's just a switch site, you can use something like, if you're a Ubiquiti shop, you can use the DRS-240 or 120, because it's a small site, you don't need a lot of power, maybe a DRS-120-24. And now you've got your 24 volt uh, to run that site, right? Or, you know, for me, I like to run all of my sites at 48 volts because it's far more efficient. It's just a better way to go, right? So, yeah, that's basically it. So anyway, um, I just wanted to squeak this video, just an overview of this new product that's on the market, the Meanwhile DRS series. Remember, DRS is the product line that you want. This, the second set is your wattage, so 240, 120, 480, and then the last digits is the voltage of the site design. And remember, folks, I'll reiterate this. Um, a 12-volt site is 13.5 volts at float, or if you're talking automotive, 14.2.
Um, and if it's depleted, it's typically around 11 volts, 10.5 volts. When you're talking about a 24 volt site, a 24 volt site will be floating at 27 volts. It'll be uh, offline, like if you go, uh, if your mains fail, so you'll drop down to 25. And typically depleted, depleted is around 22 volts. Uh, if you're talking 48 volts, 48 volt site runs at 54.4 volts float. Um, typically, if, when it drops down to 52, you're running off grid. Mains has failed. And as it depletes down to about, um, what is it, we'll say 10.5, so that'd be 42 volts would be depleted. So 42 volts would be dead for that site. Those are your swing voltages for those different ranges. So you can easily get now these small, fully enclosed, all-in-one little rectifier units for your small sites. And don't forget, if you're doing a, a larger site or something that you want something, uh, these things are quality, by the way. But never forget that ALGCOM makes some really wicked small site rectifiers. And if you guys are doing big stuff, like you've got a lot of LTE stuff, like um, uh, base cells, Aerospan, Nokia, Ericsson, anything like that, or Cyclu that requires a lot of power, you're going to want to take a look at rectifier companies like ICT or uh, LTEC or Alpha you want to have a proper rectifier that will support the uh, power requirements of your site. It's all about building out your site to spec. Okay, Design it properly, order the appropriate equipment in your build of materials, and build it properly. Just build it properly, please. So anyway, enjoy the new Mean Wells. Um, I'm going to get this video today, hopefully, so at least I've got some content out before my trip. Uh, and then hopefully before my, I go, I'm going to do one more thing, which is where I'm going to hook this guy up, and I'm going to test the voltages and whatnot on it just to see what it does and uh, if this thing uh, or how to run it basically because we got some dip switches and stuff on here so here we go and just so that you guys know uh, I might not post uh, like a full proper video over the next month because I am going to be uh, taking my vacation ish I'm going to the states for a little bit I'm gonna go and visit some of my clients I'm not going down there to work I'm just going down there to visit uh, pop down and take a look around and explore and be a tourist it's gonna be I'm a telecom tourist I get to go and see all sorts of cool shit it's gonna be awesome I'm really excited to finally get a break so anyway we'll catch you guys later I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and tell your friends and if you guys find my content helpful and you want to help feed me and support the channel join our patreon link in the description all right thanks guys we'll catch you later